Okay, I'm going to walk through one that was particularly tricky for me, which was this LibreOffice Remote Code Execution Lab. It was quite fun, um, but it did take me a while to nail it, so I'm going to go through it again. So, uh, one of the things that got me was the fact that some of the questions were about information that's on the info tab. Okay, this lab takes quite a long time to load, probably because it has lots of programs in it. So, while it's loading, it's always a good idea to read the info, okay? Basically, what you're going to do is open an email in Microsoft Outlook. There's an attachment in the email that's in there. When you mouse over um, a link in the attachment, you get some malware, okay? And that's basically what you're going to be um, experiencing. But in the meantime, if you read the info, it talks about this vulnerability that someone found in the Libra Office, which is like a open source version of Microsoft Office in the Word document one. I think it's called Libra Office Writer. OK, so you read it through and you understand the fact that there is an exploit in there somewhere that um, could be used to um, open um, programs on your computer without the user's permission. Um, anyway, you read through it and uh, the very first question, let's just go back to the questions, it says which versions of LibreOffice have been patched? That is right on the info page here. It says it was patched in these versions. So if I copy that, go back to the task, paste that in, you need to get rid of the and I think, and put a comma in there, press enter and it says correct. Okay. Now, it's still loading. Um, this is the one that took me the ages, ages to um, figure out. It says, what program does the original code from the blog post open? And I was really confused because I, th I was looking in the, um, the email, I was looking in the document, but it's not. When you go back to the info tab, it says here, uh, it talks about how this person called Alex discovered it. And for a more in-depth read, you can check out the blog post here. So when I open it, in fact, I've got it open already here. Um, it talks about um, how this vulnerability was discovered. It's really interesting. However, we want to just find the answer. So if I scroll all the way down, there's the bit of code. It's a bit of Python code that's um, running in there. And uh, what you can do is you can um, make it open up a um, particular file name. And so this next uh, line here talks about how it's running calc.exe. Now you may or may not know that calc.exe is the calculator program you get on your computer. So if you went and typed in calc.exe in your um, search bar, it will start the calculator. So that is the answer to that question there. So if I go to task, I type in calc.exe, press enter, and it's correct. That took me hours to figure out. This one's quite interesting. It says, what is the token in the payload file from the bank details ODT document? And as if by magic, it's loaded the lab. So what you need to do for this one is start up Microsoft Outlook. Here it is. Uh, there's just one email in there. I have to move it over here a bit. Um, actually, let's just close the task down for a second. Here it goes. You've been chosen as the winner of a giveaway. If this isn't a phishing email, I don't know what is. Um, but this is the attachment. You are just going to save it as. I'm going to put it in the desktop and click save. We don't need Outlook anymore, so I can just close that one down. Close it down. It's closing. There we go. So there's the bank details that ODT. Now I'm going to do what you're not supposed to do and just open it up. When I open it up, uh, you'll see it's just a um, document, like a Word document, but it's open in this LibreOffice writer, which is still very common. So um, make sure you've got a patched version if you're using it. Now you can tell it's a, a it's a phishing email because the person can't spell. Um, there's you know it's written in a very strange way. But what's interesting about this is you don't even need to click on this dodgy looking link. You can just mouse over it to trigger it and then something happens. OK, Ooh. it's opened another Word document. This document's called Evil, which is quite interesting. And it says congrats on downloading malware. Um, anyway, if I read down here, there is the token. These tokens appear through these labs with a um, 
uh, so they're kind of little code words that you find. So it's macro hacks. And I press that and that's correct. Hooray. Uh, then it says, what is the name of the file that is executed? Um, I'm just going to leave, leave that one for a second. I'm going to uh, go down to this one. This took me a while to get. This one is asking you, what is the name of the file you've just downloaded from the email? Well, that was bankdetails.odt. So bank, oops, is that typing? Bankdetails.odt. That's that one. What is the name of the file that's executed? Now, this, again, it might be a bit tricky to find. But if you, we can close this down now. Rather than opening bank details by the default um, Libra office, if you right click and choose edit with Notepad, Notepad++ is a really good um, sort of high powered version of Notepad. I'd recommend you install that. And if I just turn word wrap on, which is up here, I'm just going to zoom in so we can see what we're doing. This is what that document really looks like underneath the hood. It looks a little bit like um, HTML, there's all those tags everywhere, but the bit we want is down here. Okay, so remember it says, dear user, please click the link. And this bit here is the link with the payload in it. Okay, have a read of it. Um, this Vidin star script is the special Office Libra thing to actually run a python program so there's the python program there okay if you've done any python before you'll recognize dot pi so pi doc dot pi is the python program and then it's got this funny little uh, function called temp file pager the number one and then look looky here that is getting evil dot doc out of out of there and that's what appears on the screen so let's go back to the questions if i go up here what is the name of the file that's executed? Well, if I just move that up, we spotted it. It was called pi doc, oh, hang on. pi doc dot pi. So let's type that one in there. Pi doc dot. Actually, I think this might be wrong. I think I might have got this all around. No, sorry, it was the evil doc. <laughs> that's what. That was the one that was executed. Sorry, I've got too many answers here. There we go. Um, but what's the name of the Python script? That's pydoc.py. There we go. And that's the right answer there. And then question seven, what is the second token? This one is fun. So if you go back up to the top, it says, open and modify the bank details ODT in text editor to launch command.exe instead of the docx file. All you need to do is get rid of that whole C users ILM favorites evil.docx and put in I've forgotten what it was, command.exe. Save this, there's a little save button up there. Okay, I can close this down now. And now when I double click on it, it opens up the document, but this time when I mouse over the link, it's opened up command.exe and look, I've got a present here. I've got a token and when I open this up, that is the token. Hooray! I'll let you finish that one yourself. Okay, bye!